So welcome back to This Week in Video Games and it's Tuesday the 16th of March 2021 and that means it's weekly reset in Destiny 2 where the content rotates, the vendors and the challenges reset and we've got a chance for new content to be added into the game. Let's check out the weekly reset items for the week and first of all with the new content. And this week GM Nightfalls have been added. If you head on over to the Vanguard tab, you can see that Grandmaster Nightfalls have been added back into the game. And if you're 1325, then you can hop in. And if you're 1325, then you can definitely hop in there and try and get that adept loot. As for the seasonal activities and season of the chosen, so we've got the new challenges proving quest. You can check that one out there. So what you want to do is go and visit the helm and the war table and pick up that new quest. You can also pick up the bounties in the helm and also you can check out the seasonal challenges too and that help you rank up at the war table. Head to your quest tab, seasonal challenges at the top here. And there you can see week six. We don't have any new roadmap content this week, but next week, for those who have the season pass, we do have the new strike. And I think Iron Banner is coming back too. So a new strike to look forward to next week. Going to be really, really good. But the new content for this week is Grandmaster Nightfalls. So good luck if you're going to be jumping into those. Let's check out the Beyond Light content for the week and head on over to Europa. So the Empire Hunt this week is the Technocrat. The Eclipse Zone is in Cadmus Ridge. And the simulation this week is Safeguard. We've also got a couple of Legend Lost Sectors here, so we've got Concealed Void and Bunker E15, so remember they are on a daily rotation and they can be on Europa, the Cosmodrome and also the Moon too. We've got the Deepstone Crypt. And the challenge this week is Copies of Copies. And you can always head down and speak to Varax as well and do 8 bounties for a powerful Tier 1 reward. We've also got the Exo Stranger too. It looks like I need to go to the Exo Stranger and hand in some stuff. Well, next up we've got the playlists and the pinnacles. So let's start off with the Vanguard first. As I mentioned, Grandmaster Nightfalls are back. And the ordeal Nightfall this week is the Devil's Lair once again, so a really, really good strike. We can go in there and fight Sepix Prime. There's loads of enemies. Do beware though, it is a long strike, but it is a whole lot of fun. We can do the weekly Nightfall completion for a powerful drop, and also the 100k Nightfall will give you a pinnacle drop too. And I think the Nightfall loot this week is the Swarm after a hard week of farming for the palindrome last week. So next up we've got these strikes and you complete three strikes with the burn. And this week I believe it is solar. I'm gonna have a check it out, yes it is. The solar burn says so put on your solar subclass, do three strikes and you get a pinnacle drop. And also with the Strikes playlist this season, we've got some specific loot. So we've got the third Axiom, that is a Pulse Rifle, and we've also got the Royal Entry Rocket Launcher. Both really good weapons and definitely ones to look out for. Next up, let's have a look at the Crucible for the week. And we've got the rotating playlist this week is Clash. You can, as always, complete three matches to get a pinnacle drop. 
And if you're looking out for the weapons this season, we've got the Keening, that is a sidearm. And we've got Frozen Orbit, that is a sniper. And we've got Gambit 2, so complete three Gambit matches to get a pinnacle drop. And yes, you can get a bottom dollar, so it's a 120 energy hand cannon, and also the Trinary System 2. Next up, let's have a look at the tower, and we've got some vendors in the tower, so if you hand in eight bounties to these vendors, you will get powerful tier one rewards, and sometimes you get some bright dust too. We've got the drifter. We've got Banshee 44. Lord Shax. And also Zavala 2. So while we're here in the tower, let's go and have a look and see what Banshee 44 has got for us today. He has been on form recently, selling some really good Warmind mods this week. Hopefully you've been picking those up. It looks like today he's got another good one. So Incinerating Light pretty good so if you haven't got these war mine cell mods you should definitely go and pick them up every day so you want to check back in at reset time to banshee 44 and start building up your collection of mods as well as incinerating light we've got sprint grip let's head on over to eververse see what tess has got for us today We've got Descendant Vex Chrome. We've got the Whip Crack. Nice, nice, nice. We've got the Halcyon Shell. Like an old school Apple Mac. We've got the Belvedere. That looks pretty good. Almost kind of Tex Mechanica, that one. Then we've got the regular consumables there. Let's have a look at the other Bright Dust items. We've got Thumbs Up Projection. Good stuff. We've got an ornament for Hard Light. This one is called Foundational Structure. Not sure about that one. But that's the one. There's an emote. Yeah, very nice. We've got the Celestial Greaves. Yes, my Guardian has nice legs. We've got Threat Display. That is a nice exotic ship. That is very good. We've got the Flailing Dance. That's a pretty good one. And we've got a Sour Taste. Let's check in with some of the legacy content for the week and let's start out on the moon. We've got the Garden of Salvation Raid, that has been reset. And the challenge this time is 0 to 100. We've also got the Pit of Heresy Dungeon, so you can go in there and you can get some old school weapons and armour. We've also got the Nightmares 2, so we've got Rage, we've got Isolation, and we've got Servitude. Check out some of the other legacy content for the week and let's go over to the Dreaming City. The Petra this week is at Resilvia. You've also got the Shattered Throne dungeon. Really, really good stuff. And you can get that old school set of weapons and armor in there too. There's plenty of stuff to check out on the legacy destinations if you've never been there. Also this week, Destiny 2 Update 3.1.1 has been launched and there is a blog post on the Bungie website if you want to go and check that out. In terms of the patch notes, so we've got Crucible, the fiction issue in Trials of Osiris where the Iron Invisible Medal was appearing for all players when one player earned it. 
and the medal wasn't actually awarded to the player who did earn it, they just incorrectly got the UI pop-up as if it had been. They fixed an issue where restricted players were incorrectly unable to access Crucible and Gambit private matches, and also fixed an issue where there was no audio cue playing when an enemy player was revived in a Trials match. And we got the Cosmodrome too, so fixed an issue on Exodus Garden 2A where players could skip the first barrier by going out of the environment. We got the Dreaming City, so fixed an issue where the region chest icons would remain on the map after finding the chest. And we got a few Battlegrounds fixes, so first up we got Foothold, fixed a dropship issue that was causing some poor performance. And this should slightly improve performance during the boss encounter when the dropship arrives. Then we got Behemoth, so made key item names more consistent during the activity and fixed an issue where closing the dialogue would run longer than ending the timer of the activity. Then we got general battleground fixes, so player positioning is locked during the tribute chest slam animation. It should reduce the likelihood of killing teammates whilst opening the chest. <laughs> I didn't know you could do that, but that sounds hilarious. So fixed an issue where volatile cells would noticeably clip into the player's arm. And we've also got some fixes for strikes, so Fallen Sabre fixed an issue where the strike boss would not spawn until all the players were alive and present, and improved objective waypoint behaviour, fixed some grammatical errors in the player directive text, fixed an issue where Zavala's dialogue in the first area could play multiple times, and finally fixed a bug where the Fallen Energy Shield could be seen sticking out of a wall. And we've got some Devil's Lair fixes as well, so Sevix Prime now has a boss health bar, Fix some floating environment objects. Fix an issue where some monster spawn points look like accessible doorways to players. And fix an issue where Overload Captain could spawn with the wrong name. Fix an issue where the Fallen Walker and the Fallen Briggs could respawn after they were defeated. God, that must have been annoying. And fix an issue where physics was missing from a wall early in the strike, allowing players to get lost out of environment. There's some fixes for The Last Wish, so fixed a bug where players that died after slamming the heart could repeatedly spawn outside of the area and die, and fixed an issue where Creeping Darkness wouldn't kill players. Garden Salvation, we got fixed an issue where tether hubs could accept tethers when shielded. And that's it for the raid fix. So we've got some gameplay and investment fixes. We've got fragments, updated description of strings for Whisper of Torment and Whisper of Fractures fragments and replace combatants with targets to clarify that these fragments are applicable in both PvE and PvP activities. For armor, we got fixed an issue with the linear actuator's perk for dune marchers it was not triggering properly, and the perk now behaves as expected, triggering on each subsequent melee strike after an appropriate amount of sprint time. Font of Might no longer displays a generic damage boost, string when its benefit is active, I fixed a bug where Mantle of Battle Harmony and Omniculus were not displaying their flavour text. Omniculus no longer grants melee energy when making only yourself invisible under some circumstances, and Kirikas of the Falling Star no longer grants an overshield when using the super other than Thunder Crash. We got some weapon fixes, so fixed an issue where the flavour text wasn't appearing for several seasonal weapons, added Rumble to the end of the reload for Dead Man's Tail, Adjusted Wrist Runner perk for the VFX that were causing epileptic issues. Oh my goodness me, glad that one's been fixed. Reduced Arbalus Aim Assist, making it harder to hit some headshots in Crucible. And set the Frenzy and Cranial Spike perk to use the correct buff icons. And fix the missing Kill Feed icon on Tiku's Divination. So we've got some Bounties and Pursuits fixes. So on the offensive, New Light Quest. Fix an issue where the text in Step 2 of 4 still reference Weekly Bounties. Rebalance step 2 so the daily bounties grant the most efficient progress. And with Battlegrounds, players will now be refunded Cabal Gold when swapping Challenger medallions. And for the Triumphs, fixed an issue where completing the Forfeit Shrine Ascendant Challenge quickly wouldn't grant the Triumph for completing it quickly. Fixed an issue where completing the Agonarch Abyss Ascendant Challenge wouldn't grant the Triumph for completion. Fixed an issue where completing the Aurora Berea Ascendant Challenge wouldn't grant the Triumph for completion and fix the issue where the Parody, the Vigilant and Bakken and Relentless could fail to spawn in the Blindwell area, blocking completion of the Double Trouble Triumph. We've got some platforms and systems updates, so added quick launch activity cards to PlayStation 5, and fixed an issue where some users were missing friends or clan members on their roster for the PlayStation 5. 
And finally, we've got some general fixes. So fixed an issue where players would see incorrect space fight transitions when launching certain maps during the Iron Banner or Trials of Osiris. And fixed an issue where players with their ghost out while scanning an object instead summon their sparrow. And finally, fixed an issue where players were able to cram 12 people into activity that clearly couldn't handle the might of that many guardians. And sad to see that Bungie did finally fix that 12 man bug. Quite a lot to go through there, and I think this week it's mainly bug fixes and Grandmaster Nightfalls. And that is it for the weekly reset info for the 16th of March 2021. And if you're new around here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below for all the latest Destiny 2 content and turn on notifications by hitting that bell. And as always, thank you so much for watching or listening, and for more Destiny 2 content like this, subscribe and share with a friend. To join our community, check out the Discord link in the description, and you can follow me on Twitter at TWIVG Podcast. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful, liking and sharing the video would really help me out. Otherwise, check out the other videos on the channel. Thanks again, I'll see you in the next video.